history. I forgot, in fact, how to start this. Um, I wanted to do a comparison quickly with you with the X codes versus should codes. They all talk about X codes. Um, they should know the should codes in the first place, maybe. This is my approach. And there are even more sophisticated ones in that. Um, what are those X codes? Well, they try to evaluate the chances during the game. So there are chances coming up, they try to assess the probability to score. Give every chance a percentage to turn this one into a goal. How would you do this? Look up in the database how likely this chance will turn into a goal. Okay, that's what they do. What purpose would that have? In football, all that counts are goals. Goals are not coming in buckets in this game. Average three goals would already be very good. Everyone may notice one team coming a lot closer to scoring, the other one taking the lead and three points in the process. We all know that, we'll call it bad luck or whatever it is. It's just a matter of few goals. So X goals would be designed to eliminate uh, luck from this equation. The better team may have lost, but, but they still were, be were better. You want to assess that. So far, so good. Further benefits, not clearly in sight. Any drawbacks in that? I'm asking this question. This is part one. Well, first of all, you get nothing to compare it with. So you get your X goals results. And what do you say now? Okay, Bayern are better. They got the better X goals value. They won the game. What questions would be answered here? None. We all knew they are better. They were better. We expect them to be better. One interesting question would be, were they as much better as could have been expected? Were they even more superior or less superior? No chance to find out with the X goals approach. Any drawbacks in that part too? How do the teams get to their chances? A question we may ask. If you measure nothing but the chance itself, you forget about other chances in the making. There had been created chances, but they didn't take the shot. What if a cross comes close? But the striker misses the ball by half an inch. Nothing to count. No value in the X goals. What if the striker is one on one with a keeper but does not manage to even take the shot? Because maybe the keeper is just in time to nick it off his, his uh, feet. Now let us not forget about the conversion rate. There is a difference in that top striker versus intermediate striker or even bad strikers if there are any. If you do not care, you make a mistake. One more thing to mention, many of those possibly well-assessed chances just come their way. So just ball, ball is falling, falling uh, to his feet and so they, they think, oh, very good chance, they didn't even create it. It's just coming their way. Introducing a better method over that x goals approach, that's what I'm doing because I'm trying to be professional in everything, of course, in this gambling and in this betting approach. Okay, first of all, the term is wrong. X goals goes down to expected goals. That, that's what they refer to. You can hardly say afterwards what you would have expected beforehand. The better term is goals they should have scored. That's what I say. We could also express it like goals they would have deserved to score. That's what they, their effort measures much better. Compare those values with something you expected before the game was started. That's what I'm doing. Compare X goals, expected goals to goals they should have scored. Once those are my expected goals before the game, once we know before the game is kicked off what we expected and the amount of goals we scored for either side, we got something to compare the should goals with. The problem would be how do we determine this? There is a long-term approved method to do so. How to calculate the expected goals? Okay. The Batmaster tool is running now ever since 1990. Successfully, I would call it. The algorithms, the algorithms are not that complex. Team ratings are determined by goals expected to score and goals expected to concede. That is more or less what they scored in the amount of games and that's the average. But of course, that's being adjusted. Plus, we need to take care of the home advantage. There, it's getting a bit more complex. Still, we are easily able to. One more value would be the goal average within the league. That's something we have to compare it with. 
Then there is this simple formula. Even if not revealed here, it is proven, which can easily done, be done by statistics. That's what, I've, what I'm doing over all the years. And here I'm giving you just one evidence of the value of the Batmaster tool that you can get your access to um, if you follow the link uh, below in the description. And it's algorithms calculated the expected goals for match day 12 of German Bundesliga. So you're just one click away more or less from getting these stats or these expectancies on your screen as well on your computer via web app. Anyway, here are 1.02, 3.16 Bayern Munich, they are much better. Anyway, that's the calculation done by my Batmaster tool and that's working for plenty of years. You may not see the algorithms here, they are hidden, but it's everything, um, of course, it's, it's mathematically even approved. Here I show you one, just another evidence of the value of the calculations made by the Batmaster tool and its algorithms. I'm trying to show you one more thing. This is the actual values from this uh, season 2021-2022. 11 games have been played. They had 9 wins, 7.69 expected and so on. The, the green ones are plus minus points. So they have are more, more points than expected. Also Dortmund and plus minus goals. Bayern, of course, once again, Freiburg also 11 goals better. Third are of obviously very much worse. But this is just um, one printout from the tool. So you, here you could say, well, that's bad calculations. Anyway, we see the goal average that had been expected, 3.11. It's close to last season's average. Now it's only 3.02. Home advantage, we have a much bigger home advantage at the moment. We do not really know why. But um, anyway, you, you would have to compare with others. Are they doing a better job there? But this is just that I tried to show you that my calculations for the expected goals are working well. Uh, here I have one final table of the 2020 and 2021 season, including expected and should goals. Here you can see that Bayern expected, I expected 101. Uh, they should have had 104, they scored 99. So that you see that it's uh, all over the place. I'm coming pl pretty close. Um, and also the points expected 77.14, they won even 78. So everything is pretty close, right? Also for Leipzig. And the, this is always these, this is my shoot goals also calculated with my approach. So you can see here as well, for example, Leipzig should have now expected 767 goals. They should have had 72 even. They scored only 60. They should have uh, expected them to concede 40. They should have conceded 40. So, um, but anyway, those, um, I'm coming pretty close here anyway, when you compare all the values. How to turn stats into goals should. The statistic-based method cares for a couple of things. We prefer to evaluate the team's efforts by some more values than just the eventual shot taken. There are such things as possession, crosses, corners, all of them produce some tiny little chance to score a goal from there. We want this to be rated. There is this one more very important thing already mentioned, the conversion rate. What is the conversion rate? They are very obviously the better strikers. They usually play in the better teams. What makes them better is easy to explain. They need smaller or less chances to score their goals. They have a better conversion rate. Even if this sounds complicated, it is possible and it's done already. So the algorithms are applied. We should not forget that the chances the better teams create are also in many cases the better chances. So better strikers getting better chances makes them convert their chances better. There is such a thing, thing as the defensive conversion rate. We should not forget. What? Yes, well, the algorithms used and applied all over the place are the ones always caring for the value offensively and defensively. We need that anyway for the calculation of the expectancies, which is applied as well for all the stats. So it's well expected, for, uh, it's cal use the algorithm for the expected goals. Goals to be scored uh, is also um, accounted for the, the other team's defensive strength. So we always need the offensive from the one side, defensive from the other, and the vice versa. So we calculate as well the shots a team concedes. We can ca ca uh, calculate that as well. They may take many shots themselves, but they also allow pl plenty of those by the opposition. This happens, so you, you, you would not say they are a very good side. Why? They shot, shoot so many uh, shots, they take so many shots. 
well, but but they even conceded more, so they are playing offensively. But you, you must not forget that. This system applies for all stats and also for the goals expected, but also for the conversion rate. Defensive conversion rate part two. Um, the better teams sometimes have the better goalkeepers as well. So there is a de defensive conversion rate as well. The better goalkeeper keeps out more shots. Manuel Neuer, he stops every shot. So if the opposition manages to take a shot, still the chance may be lower for this ball to cross the line. Apart from, apart from that, better teams may allow chances less likely to be converted. Why? Because the better defensive defenders force the attackers further out, or they tackle them harder, they force them, force them to take worse shots. Okay, anyway, I'm, I'm gonna close with this. I mean, I know there's a lot more into this, but I don't want to keep you that long. I'm gonna um, close this video, uh, like it if you like it, follow my channel, subscribe, leave a comment if you have something to say about or ask about it. Thanks a lot for watching, bye bye.